To integrate sine x to the power of 4, we want to express it as a power of sine squared. We can rewrite sine to the 4 as sine squared squared. This is useful because then we can apply some power reducing identities. You may recall that sine squared is the same as 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. So sine squared squared is 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 squared. Then we can expand this so we'll actually do the squaring. When we square the denominator, we'll get a factor of 4 down there. Let's just slide that out of the integral. That gets us here. We slid out the 1 fourth, and then squaring the numerator gives us 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. We can integrate the 1. We can integrate the minus 2 cosine 2x, but to integrate the cosine squared of 2x, we'll have to apply the power reducing formula. So, integrating what we can and leaving the 1 fourth out front, 1 integrates to x. Minus 2 cosine of 2x integrates to minus sine of 2x. You can see if we took the derivative of this, we'd get negative cosine of 2x, and then the factor of 2 would come from the chain rule. Then we just have to integrate this part, cosine squared of 2x. Cosine squared of 2x, though, is the same as 1 plus cosine of 4x all over 2. And since we did some integration, we'll also throw on the arbitrary constant at the end. This is the identity we're using in case you forgot it. Cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2. In this case, when we're applying the identity to cosine squared of 2x, this input of 2x is getting doubled. That's why we end up with the 4x. In any case, we can now finish the integration. We still have our 1 fourth out front and the x minus sine of 2x. Then we integrate the 1 over 2 to get 1 half x, which just leaves the cosine 4x over 2, which we can integrate to sine of 4x over 8. You can see if we took the derivative of this, we'd get cosine of 4x, then we'd multiply by 4 by the chain rule, and the 4 over 8 would give us that factor of 2 in the denominator. And of course, we still have the arbitrary constant plus c. Technically, another constant popped out when we integrated this, but in the end, you add a bunch of constants together that are arbitrary, and you just get another arbitrary constant. So we'll leave it as c. Finally, doing a little bit of simplification and distribution, 1 fourth gets multiplied by x, and 1 fourth gets multiplied by 1 half x. Now 1 fourth x is the same as 2 eighths x. And 1 fourth times 1 half x is 1 eighth x. So they add together to give us 3x over 8. Then we have minus sine of 2x over 4 and plus sine 4x over 32 plus the arbitrary constant of c. And that is how you integrate sine x to the power of 4. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.